talk a little bit on uh, on uh, e assessments especially online assessments and uh, unlike uh, a lot of my uh, other colleagues this is not the fun element of it you've got to evaluate what you've learned and or uh, either an instructor led class or a Yeah, so as I was saying, you know, you've got to, you've got to actually uh, prove what you've learned and how you've learned, whether it's an e-learning mode or a uh, instructor-led class or uh, whether it is uh, yeah, on any particular platform. So this is a little serious note, and just to add to it, uh, some of our areas also we don't allow uh, smartphones, so that's fine with it. But we've figured out technology how to still use it and not uh, not misuse it. So there is something that we could lock, etc. So that that's available. So I'm going to take you a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be in too detail, but uh, but stop me wherever you want, and I'm available offline for any specific questions. Uh, I, I don't think Aptech needs an introduction, but still, uh, assessment is something that uh, that belongs to the enterprise group of Aptech. Unlike what many people would have heard, that we do a lot of business in the retail uh, in the field of training, uh, and uh, two factors that uh, determine uh, our success there. One is that we've been in the training business for too long and we've realized that somebody needs to do an assessment of the training that, need, that has happened. How do you uh, bring it to a level or market saying that what is the level of learning? Has the learning objective been met? What is the learning outcome? And we started uh, assessment a couple of years back. Today we are at a state that we're one of the largest uh, assessment vendors uh, in the country and, uh, and we do only online assessments. We are completely out of paper pencil assessments. Now, a lot many places, what is the current practice? I think the current practice still says that they do a lot of paper pencil um, uh, assessments. Uh, we all understand how uh, logistical nightmares uh, these are, uh, lack of transparency, the time it takes for somebody to come back and give you the results. Uh, and not necessarily in any particular field, as you will see further in my presentation. This is cut across, whether it's academia, whether it's any particular vertical. Uh, it's critical uh, time is the sense today. And uh, if you cannot deliver what you tested in, in a matter of two to three days, it's next to impossible to get any meaningful results of that. Now, what are e-assessments? I think uh, most of us know in this room, they are paperless, they're essentially computer-based. Uh, what started computer-based, but I think the platforms have moved. I think we've now gone into different other platforms. Uh, one could do it on a mobile platform as well, to the extent that if you are a distance learning student and if uh, if the institute or, or the organization that you are doing a distance learning from does not necessarily want you to come to a classroom and take a computer-based test, you could still take it from any particular uh, platform uh, from your home. All right. What are the phases that comes in e-assessment? I think uh, it's easier said than done, but e-assessment again comes in three phases. First is the pre-test phase. Where whether it is a B2C model or a B2B model, a lot of preparation needs to be done from the perspective of uh, what, is, uh, what is the client's uh, uh, request and how does the client want it to be handled. Uh, whether it is a question bank or a content that the client gives or the client expects us to do a question bank. We do question bank and, and domain uh, subject matter uh, requirements for most of our clients and have SMEs on almost all the areas at this point of time. The second level is the actual test level. We kind of deliver the test, uh, which is the question paper deployment, the test center management. This is very infrastructure and, and resource hungry. And we conduct the test uh, for, for our client. And then post-test, we do a lot of compilation, a lot of analysis of data, uh, depending on, again, uh, you know, uh, client's requirements, uh, who's, you know, some wanted the results on a percentile basis, some particularly want results on uh, which particular question did the client or the, did the candidate uh, answer correct or did not answer correct. And therefore, there's a whole lot of analytics that goes in uh, in terms of delivery. Uh, some of the critical components, I think, uh, and I can safely say that having, having done it across uh, close to about uh, m more than about three to 400 clients now, we're possibly one of the largest players in this. And uh, uh, robust delivery and infrastructure network is one of the key factors that uh, helps uh, uh, us proved what we've done. It's, it's been a learning. I must tell you that when we started online business uh, from an assessment perspective, uh, I think we bled. Uh, but that's, that's where we learned as well. Uh, today, all that learning is actually helping us uh, proving ourselves as 
uh, uh, to deliver some of the real mission critical assignments that we do for either the government uh, or a lot of public sector, private sector as well as uh, the academia. Uh, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is one of the charts which says who requires and who kind of does uh, assessments today. Uh, of course, government PSU in a big way. Uh, I think they've come up uh, quite forward in terms of whether it is uh, promotion related or it is uh, recruitment related. They do a lot of uh, uh, assessments online. IT, ITS, we've got some very interesting uh, uh, you know, uh, products available in that segment where we do, and I was mentioning to some of our panelists on, on what we do for some of our clients in the IT, ITS space. Not only do we do an assessment or an elimination from an aptitude perspective whether the person in a particular you know, industry is fit or not, uh, in the BPO industry for specifically, we could also calibrate your voice remotely. We could figure out whether you're fit to be suited to a particular environment, uh, whether your voice meets your client's uh, uh, range, etc., to be uh, as, as a BPO agent. Uh, and that's helped us a lot. Uh, BFSI, pharma, and manufacturing segment have also gone into a big way. I think uh, the recruitments here is, is a key. They recruit in large numbers, and some of these... Uh, uh, majority of these recruitments are done, done by us. And education, of course, Academia is where we started, and most of the ed education institutes, barring a couple of where we compete with each other, are not with us, but we continue to do that. Some of our testing capabilities that you see, uh, I mean, I think, as I said, uh, some people think that online test is possibly uh, just you know, can be done on a GFE. No, it cannot be. You actually need a time frame of about a month, month and a half to two months to deliver uh, a mission-critical error-free uh, kind of a test which starts from a test creation and ends into possibly an analytics, as I said. And there's a whole lot of uh, uh, whole lot of things that goes in, which is, includes infrastructure management, doing a million tests across, uh, you know, the same time. Um, the, the way we, we can scale it up, so it's it's a pretty uh, in infrastructure intensive work that we do uh, for our clients. I think uh, you know some of our capabilities in that space. Uh, we've we've actually delivered a real large number of tests and, and kind of, uh, I think the, the only first ISO certified company that got into this space. Uh, some of our, uh, you know, new initiatives we've actually now reached worldwide, uh, have operations almost everywhere so we can deliver offline and online kind of an examinations in every, uh, in every country. Uh, some, of, uh, some of our larger clients have actually asked us to deliver examinations across. One of our large Indian clients uh, has uh, has centers all across the world, and we cannot conduct examinations for them uh, in, in, in the entire, some of our client lists. Um, and that's it. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that uh, while there's a lot of fun elements in what, what you guys do, uh, this is serious business, uh, and this is an essential part of the overall curve that you have, which is in the learning and development space, and, uh, and a curve that you shouldn't miss. I've heard that 70% of the people learn on the job. Now, fundamentally, what have they learned? Have they learned right or have they learned wrong? Internally, have we ever done an assessment of the same? Uh, some of these assessments are need, not be, uh, need not be mission critical, but I think all organizations need to start adapting to, to assessments in a way that it kind of enhances their workforce. It enhances the quality of the workforce that they have. There could be, you know, maybe 50% of the 70% is actually good in what they've learned on the job, but the balance have not learned it proper, and therefore they'll continue to do it wrong every step they do. Uh, and I think here is, is an element where you should possibly bring in where some of these uh, e-assessment methodologies should be brought in in terms of trying and gauging what your workforce is up to. Right, so thank you very much. That's all I have. Uh,